Hi, it's Alex. Uh, it's been a while since I recorded a video. I am in a new house, which I can tell you about later. Today I want to talk about online dating versus real life dating, and why and how I stopped using dating websites. Uh, I want to preface this by saying that I am married now, and I'm really happy about the relationship that I'm in, which is really awesome. Uh, and I would caution you about taking advice from people who are not in relationship situations that you want to be in. Like, different people out there want different things. Some people want to get married, some people don't. Some people might want to get married later, whatever. A lot of people aren't even looking for monogamy ever, and that's totally fine. Uh, just be cautious about taking one-size-fits-all advice. So I want to make clear I'm not everybody else. There's a specific set of things that I'm looking for, a specific type of relationship. So I'm not intending this to be sort of like, everyone has to follow this kind of thing. Uh, I'm saying this is what worked for me. Um, I used online dating for years. I have had two uh, fairly serious relationships with people that I met through a uh, dating website, OkCupid. And I've tried a number of other websites and apps, too, at various points in my life. And although I did have some good results, like I made a really great lifetime friend through someone I met through a dating site, so not the person themselves, but like they introduced me to their whole friend group, and I ended up becoming very close to one person in particular, uh, and a whole, whole group of friends. So I had some really great successes like that. Overall, my experience with online dating has been not good. I also have had a number of really bad experiences with it. And I think over time, my experience with online dating has gotten worse and worse. So the, the good experiences that I have with it are pretty, pretty far back in my past. And the times in my life, like a little bit more recently, like when I had relationships and I broke up, and then I tried using online dating again, each time it seemed to get worse each time. Um, I'm not 100% sure why I had such a bad time, but it really didn't work for me. And I meet a lot of people out there that it doesn't work for. And I meet people with very different circumstances, life circumstances. Like in my case, I'm assigned male at birth, I'm non-binary, but I live most of my life as male, and so most of my experiences using dating sites was back from when I was living as male. So that's sort of a little bit of an atypical experience. You know, maybe I'm not like typical men in a sense. But I've talked to plenty of men who have had similar bad experiences, and I've talked to plenty of women who have had similar bad experiences to me. So um, I want to talk about why I think dating sites don't work for a lot of people. Uh, one of the problems with dating sites, there is this huge asymmetry, gender asymmetry. There are tons and tons of men, and there are not as many women. Um, so there's this gender disparity that by and large does not exist out in the real world. Like, for the most part, the real world tends to be pretty balanced with roughly equal numbers of men and women. And there tend to be, you know, certain activities attract more women, certain attract more men, and so on. But like online dating, for whatever reason, seems to have a lot of men who are pretty serious about looking relative to women. Um, there's also this thing, it's not just the raw numbers, it's the seriousness of it. Uh, I've known a lot of women who uh, sign up for dating sites sort of out of curiosity, and they're not necessarily serious about it, and so they get a lot of messages, and they read them, and they don't necessarily, you know, respond to them. And like with the newer sites, you have this sort of concept of matching with someone, like the sort of swiping based apps. And they'll match with someone, maybe let the person message them a little, and then they'll just drop, drop the conversation. And I think part of it is that a lot of these people weren't serious to begin with. So there's this sort of disparity. And this disparity leads to a lot of really toxic behavior. And the, the behavior actually, it makes a lot of sense when you think about what kind of atmosphere and culture is created when you have this big gender disparity. You have a lot of men who send a lot of messages, and then a lot of women get inundated with a lot of unwanted attention. So they're getting tons and tons of messages, and then they get frustrated by that, 
And then the men get frustrated because most of the people aren't writing back and most of the people aren't engaging. And this has by and large been my experience when using these sites. And you know, it was probably because I was using them as a man. Uh, I would send out a lot of messages, only get some replies, and it, it contrasted with my experience in real life. I'm not, in no means am I someone who like has always had lots and lots of attention from people interested in me, but it was never as bad as it is on dating sites. And for me at least, it seemed to get worse over time. I don't know why. Um, so there's this, this disparity, and it just it feels bad. Like when I'm out living my life, there's a certain calibration of my interactions, human interactions. Like I'm used to certain types of things, and uh, I'm used to getting back a certain amount of attention. And so when I go on an online dating site and I'm putting out the same amount or a similar amount of energy and getting much less back, it just it's hard to retain, retain an optimistic mindset. So that's one thing that I don't like. Now from the other end of it, I've talked to tons of women who deal with this sort of onslaught of unwanted attention, and it feels really bad for them too. Like, so this, I want to make, make clear this isn't something of like, oh, men have it worse. Women have it worse in a different way. Like, this, this situation that exists on these online dating apps and sites it doesn't seem to me to be good for either gender. So that's the, fir the first thing that I don't like about online dating apps and websites. But there's another thing that I really, really don't like that I think is almost worse, and it kind of feeds into making that first problem even worse than it would be on its own. And the second problem is the loss of, or lack of, social accountability. Normally, when I meet people in real life, I know someone in common with them. Like if I'm at an activity or an event, I maybe went there with people. If it's somewhere I go regularly, I'm going to know some of the people. Not necessarily saying they're close friends, just that I know some people. And so if I meet someone and we're potentially flirting or interested, we have some mutual acquaintances in common. And that counts for a lot more than I think a lot of people realize. Like, you think, oh, like, how is it? It's, it's just an acquaintance. Well, there's a certain accountability that comes with knowing people in common with someone. Like, if I do something really, really bad to someone else, really mean, unethical, wrong, whatever, word is going to get around. And similarly, if someone does something really bad to me, I'm going to talk about it with people I know. I'd be like, hey, you know, I went out with this person and they did this thing, and people would be like, oh, like, what the heck, like, how could someone do that, you know? And, and the mere threat of the possibility of doing that, I think, kind of puts a damper on people's behavior. There are certain things that maybe they might do if there were no accountability, but when you have some, just a few mutual acquaintances in common, it prevents some of that worst behavior. Now, what, what am I talking about here? Let's get specific. And this is, this is not theoretical. This is things that either I've experienced or people close to me have experienced, sometimes multiple people. There's uh, sexual assault, rape, uh, other sort of gray area consensual behaviors, non-consensual behaviors like people just being pushy in a romantic or sexual sense. Um, so there are those sorts of consent issues. Uh, another issue is ghosting. Ghosting is a major problem. Ghosting is basically where like you're, you're interacting with someone and all of a sudden the person just drops off the face of the planet. Maybe they even block you on all social media and you just completely lose contact with them. Now, this kind of thing almost never happens when I know people in real life. Like I've had people where we have a really tense conversation and something blows up, but we work it out. Like maybe we don't talk for a few weeks, but like you know, we make up, and it's like, like cutting someone off completely, it's a really drastic thing to do in a normal, in real life connection. But online, with these online dating sites and apps, people do it all the freaking time. Like, if you talk to someone who has used any of these apps, you will find that they have had numerous experiences being ghosted. And sometimes it's people that they have gone out with and gone on dates with and, and it felt good, maybe even people they've had sex with or had other sort of meaningful connections with, and then the people just ghost them. And that hurts. And 
I think it's a bad behavior. I am not, not for a second going to entertain the possibility that there is a valid defense for this type of behavior. Now, I, I want to make clear there are some extreme situations. Someone does something really, really bad where it can be warranted to ghost them. Those situations are in the minority. Most of the situations where people get ghosted, there's no clear reason, and it's just like, why are you doing this? And I think that this behavior, people are kind of enabled in doing this because there's no social accountability. Like, if I did that to people who I knew in person, word would get around and people would be like, oh, you know, like, this person does this, this is not a very nice thing, and I think people would probably not want to interact with me, and I wouldn't blame them for that. I mean, I think this is a good thing that people have this social accountability. And again, the non-consensual things, the ghosting, those are just two of many, many kinds of rude and harmful behaviors that can happen on dating sites. Like, I've had people just write incredibly nasty stuff to me, just really like hostile things to me that, that people I've met in real life would never ever do. Uh, I've also had like really pushy sexual behavior, like, and, and women get this much more than men, but like even being on these sites as a man, I still got this occasionally. Like I had people, like one time someone sent me unsolicited nude pics. I didn't want that. You know, it's like a boundary crossing behavior. Uh, sometimes people are just like, they're sort of like pushing the interaction in a certain way. And when I've interacted with men on the site, uh, it, it can be even worse. So like, I definitely have a sense of like, women seem to get more of this from men. Um, so, okay, so that's, that's yet another example of a sort of behavior on these apps and websites that doesn't really happen to the same degree in person. It definitely happens in person, and I know lots of examples of it, but all of this stuff seems to be like partially controlled by dating people in real life. Now, you may at this point be saying, hey, I'm totally sold on this idea, but how the heck do I do it? Like, it's intimidating, you know, like using an app, using a website, that's easy. How, how do I date in real life? And yes, it's, it's a little bit harder, especially if you're not used to it, but I want to give you some ideas about how to do it. Um, one of the most important things, or most valuable things, is to go to activities or events that happen regularly. So I'm hugely into social dancing. I like swing dancing, like Lindy Hop, uh, I like blues dancing, I like contra dancing, those are examples of social dance scenes. There are all sorts of other scenes too that I'm not as into. There's like tango, there's salsa, there's like endless numbers of types of social dances. That's only one of many types of activities that I do. Another activity that I really like, I like board games, so I regularly go to board game clubs. I also like nature activities. Uh, so I go to all sorts of like nature-oriented activities. Now you may find some are better for meeting people close to you in age than others, or your target dating demographic. Like, I've always been into er bird watching, but when I go, I'm usually the youngest person there, sometimes by like 20 or 30 years. Like, even as I'm getting older now, I still go to these things, and I'm still the youngest person there sometimes, and so it's like, that's not necessarily going to be my prime dating pool, and it certainly wasn't when I was in my 20s, but I still got into bird watching in my 20s. So you have to sort of like narrow it down, be like, okay, for me I found social dancing was like a little bit of a better way to meet people that I might date. Uh, and you may be into completely different activities. The point is you want to find an activity that meets regularly, something that is near you and that you enjoy. It's fun, you like doing it for its own sake, and it has a target demographic that you, you tend to vibe with the people. Like you, you find people there who you feel attracted to, you have some chemistry with them, and it's an environment that's sort of friendly and people are interested in mingling. So not necessarily something like a book club. People sometimes say, oh, like meet people through a book club, and it's just like, I don't think that's a great idea because it's sort of like a smaller group it's, there's less turnover, and people aren't necessarily looking to sort of go there to meet people. Uh, so you want to think critically about like the nature of the activity. Okay, so going to these weekly events, uh, ideally weekly, if you can't find that, maybe find something that's monthly. If it's not at least once a month, 
you're probably not going to find the best potential from meeting people to date at that activity. So I really look for stuff that happens more often. Weekly is the best. Uh, and you go to this regularly, you show up, you get to know people. Not only are you going to meet people, but you also get that protective social relationships, the sort of social accountability, so that when you do meet someone, you will know some people in common. Not necessarily close friends, just acquaintances. And that will make it safer and just a better experience for dating. So that's the one thing, these regular events. The other thing that I think is really helpful is uh, house parties and events at people's homes. And you can start this process by hosting stuff yourself if you have a good, uh, a good home, a good space in your home to host stuff at. And also, if you host stuff regularly, people will kind of want to reciprocate. So you might get invited to more stuff too. But if you don't have a good space, you know, it, it helps if you can be that person who everyone wants to invite to a party because you bring good food, you bring beer, you bring whatever it is people want. Uh, so, you know, having like a scene of sort of events in people's homes where you're meeting friends of friends, that is also a really great way to meet people. I actually met my wife Heather initially at a party at someone's house and then we didn't really, we talked, but we didn't really talk a lot until we, we started running into each other at regular events that we were both attending. So like, both of those factors fed in uh, to us connecting. And that's often how it works. Like, if you really click with someone, you will run into each other multiple times. Uh, and that's why I don't, I don't really believe in this whole sort of like missed connection thing. Like, life isn't always all that random. Like, you can make it systematic. If you're living in a specific place and you're interested in certain things and you go to events focused around those interests and you put yourself out there, you socialize with people, you have friends, you invite them to things, you organize events, you participate in people's events, you will meet the people who are like single and potentially vibe with you. Like, you will find each other uh, without using apps. That's how I feel, and it definitely worked for me, and I will tell you, my life got better, like, almost overnight, my dating life got better when I just ditched all these apps, and I started focusing on the in-person connection. So I would strongly encourage you to do that. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Do you agree or disagree with this? Do you have anything to add? Do you have any questions? Is some of this still a little intimidating? You're like, well, this sounds great, like, how do I do it? Please comment, I'd love to talk about this more. And also, I look forward to making and posting more videos. I'm hoping to get back on a roll of doing it again. Yeah, thank you!